Python is F tier. All right, so first up we have assembly, and I think assembly, it's really cool. Uh, it's a lot of fun when you want to learn about like the inner workings of a computer, what's going on really in the CPU, but uh, it's not practical. No one wants to use assembly. Uh, you'd never use it for an actual pr product or a project, rather. I think it's probably C tier. You know, maybe a small project you're just working on, maybe like a little game, but nothing really big, so C tier. Next up, Bash. Um, I like Bash. I like writing small scripts just to uh, make things a bit easier. It's probably a B tier overall, uh, nothing too special. I wouldn't use it for anything too big, uh, but that's just me. It gets the job done, B tier. All right, so C, uh, this is definitely a, maybe a controversial one. I'm gonna put C at A tier because what's coming next. <laughs> I think C is uh, overall a good language. Uh, a lot's borrowed from C in newer languages. You can make pretty much anything you want. And um, yeah, overall a good language used for a lot of things, A tier. All right, so next up, maybe something a bit controversial. I have C++ going in S tier. And I know that a lot of people probably say C is above or at least equal to C++. But I really like um, classes. I like the C++ templates. I know there are some maybe bugs or errors that are a bit verbose when you use templates. But overall, it makes a bit more sense to me. You can do pretty much the exact same things with C and C++. So I think S tier just because I enjoy the classes. All right, so C Sharp, this is actually my favorite language to write code in. I really like the, the backend development with ASP.NET. I think it's got a lot, a lot of uh, nice quality of life features over say something like Java. Um, they've been making a lot of cool stuff like Blazor lately, Maui. So I'm gonna put it B tier. I think maybe not as influential or as performant as C or C++. So B tier, I think the, the ecosystem, it's really nice, but overall, maybe not as good as other languages that are coming up later in the list. Okay, so CSS, I don't know if I'd really put this on a language tier list, if I made it myself. Um, it is a language, I guess, but it's not really used in the same way all these other languages are used. I'm gonna put in F tier, because I hate having to make stuff responsive it sucks. Um, if you're going to use CSS, just use like Tailwind, something like that, because it's definitely not worth trying to make everything responsive, at least if you're as bad at CSS as I am. <laughs> uh, next we have Fortran. I know nothing about this. I know it's old. It's not really used anymore, but it was used uh, a long time ago. So I'm just gonna put it in D tier. All right, so next up we have Go, and I think this might be also a bit controversial. I know a lot of people either love Go or they hate Go. Um, I'm pretty okay with Go. Uh, I don't, it's not love or hate with me. I've used it a couple times for a few projects, but overall I think it's probably in B tier next to C Sharp. It's got some nice things like the Go routines, but also uh, I think it's fixed a bit now, but with the Go path and stuff, uh, I think you can use uh, Go modules now, which makes it a lot easier. And the error handling is a little bit odd, I find. I think it could be a bit better overall. So I think B tier below C sharp is probably adequate. Next we have Haskell, and this is, uh, I guess, our first functional programming language on the list. And I really like functional programming languages. Uh, I find they make more sense than uh, object-oriented, even though uh, what I said was C++. But overall, I think it's probably easier to learn a functional programming language as your first language. And I think Haskell is overall a pretty good functional programming language. I find that I prefer something more um, F sharp or Camel. But I know Haskell is pretty pure. So I'm going to put this at A tier. I think it's a great language, but I prefer having a little bit less strict of a language, so I'm like OCaml where I can use some paradigms or parts of paradigms from other languages. All right, next up we have HTML. Um, I don't know 
what the person who made this tier list thought the M stood for. I'm going to put S tier, not a program language, easy to write, fun to mess around. All right, so Java, and this is what I was talking about earlier when I said that C Sharp's ecosystem was good but not great. I think the Java ecosystem is a lot better than the C Sharp one. I think C Sharp's getting better, but it's a lot more, uh, I guess, corporate or Microsoft made libraries around where Java has a lot of open source projects, a lot of cool stuff going on. And I think the syntax might be a little bit worse than C Sharp on some things, but it's not really that big of a difference. There's a lot of cool projects. Obviously the code you write in Java is going to be running on the JVM, not as performant as say a C, C++ type of thing. I think overall, since it's so easy to learn, you don't really have to worry about memory management, a lot of libraries, a lot of tutorials, stuff like that. I'm going to put this in S tier. And I know it probably shouldn't be above C, but I think C is a little bit verbose, a little bit harder to understand. Okay, so now we have JavaScript, and this is something that I think is either S or F tier, depending on who you're talking to. It's either a love or a hate type of thing. I like JavaScript. Um, I see the TypeScript is not on the list, which I'd rate probably a bit higher than JavaScript, maybe like one tier above, because JavaScript does have quite a few weird things going on, you know, triple equal to make sure something's actually uh, has a quality. But JavaScript does have such an influence on everything with the web and even coming into the desktop, mobile, you know, React Native, uh, Electron, things like that. I think I'd probably give it an A tier. I think I'd probably give it an A tier again because of some of the weird quirks with the language. Uh, bringing it down a tier. Um, no typing, which is solved by TypeScript. Just the influence makes it so high up on the list. All right, next up we have Kotlin. Not much to say about this. Uh, pretty much the same as with Java, but I find the, the syntax actually a bit worse. I know a lot of people like better null safety, things like that, but um, I'm just gonna put an A tier. All right, so next up we have LaTeX. If you're making a document, a research paper, something like that, this is definitely an S tier uh, language, that's where I'm gonna put it. I don't know what else you're gonna do with LaTeX, really. Uh, that's pretty much all I'd ever use it for, but it does a really good job at that, predictable, looks nice, um, S tier. All right, next up we have this green guy. I think this is Lisp. Um, I like the functional aspect, like I said with Haskell. I think overall Lisp is a pretty good language. I had to learn it in one of my college classes in my second year, I think. Too many parentheses, man. I, I get lost in it. Maybe a better IDE than the one I use could help, but I don't really like the parentheses. Um, so I'm just gonna put it C tier. All right, so now we have Lua. This is definitely an interesting one. Um, I think the syntax is kind of garbage. It's got like the uh, bit of Ruby syntax mixed in there, but I think the the use cases kind of fit into with the, you know, using with C++ to make uh, mods for games and stuff like that. It's pretty useful. So I'm gonna put it at C tier. So MATLAB, this is definitely an interesting one. If you're an engineer, you're probably putting it at the top of the list, S, A tier, somewhere around there. It's got some good docs. It's pretty useful if you're an engineer. It's probably what you're gonna learn in college. I think overall though, as a, a software engineer, as a programmer, you're not going to really want to use MATLAB for anything. You're gonna use a, a language with more libraries, a bit more support for everything. So I'm gonna put it right down the middle. I'm gonna put it at B tier. Good for engineering, probably wouldn't build any software around it. All right, so next up on the list, okay, so next up we have MySQL. I'm just gonna take this as any kind of SQL uh, for our purposes here. I think SQL, easy to learn. Um, I mean, it's kind of a requirement if you're gonna do anything with databases or at least relational databases. So I'm gonna put this at A. Okay, next up we have Perl, and I'm gonna put this in C tier. Um, it's kind of like Fortran, oh, it's PHP, kind of like Fortran. I think overall, um, it's older. I know they still uh, maintain it, people still use it. But I've never used it. I looked at the syntax. Uh, it was okay. All right, so PHP, a language uh, it seems everyone hates. Um, I think that the problem with PHP is a lot of these older sites you see, or uh, like WordPress sites, stuff like that. It's got a lot of hacked together code, a lot of bad PHP. But I think overall, if you actually use PHP in this modern state, whether that be uh, just like plain PHP or something like uh, Laravel for the back end, it's pretty nice to actually work with. So I'm gonna put it at B tier. Um, PowerShell, uh, I feel the exact same way as I do uh, about Bash, B tier. 
yo, if you like the tier list so far, like the video, maybe subscribe. That'd be pretty cool. Thanks. Python. This one's a bit controversial because I know a lot of people love Python, but I'm not one of them. I think overall Python is pretty garbage. It's got use cases in a couple areas. Uh, I'm talking about machine learning, AI type of thing, uh, data science, the syntax kind of sucks, um, annotations uh, for white spaces. It's not great. Um, every other language uses brackets. There's kind of a reason for that. It's nice. It's easier to look at. And I think PIP, um, the package manager or package installer is kind of garbage. There's a couple new ones coming up. And I know you can use something like uh, Anaconda. It can really help with the dependencies. But overall, um, I'm gonna probably put this low C tier. All right, next up we have R. This is kind of like Python where it's pretty much used for certain areas we're talking about, uh, you know, stuff like stats and that, a bit of data science. Um, it indexes at one, so it is F tier with CSS. Okay, so Ruby's a pretty nice language to write. I've written it a couple times, but I do find that the syntax is a bit odd with the, you know, if end, and you have to write end to end the block. So I'm gonna dock at a couple of points for that. Rails is pretty easy, it's pretty nice. Uh, there's a reason everyone used to use it. So I'm probably gonna put it at C tier above Python, it's an okay language. All right, next up we have Rust, and this is an instant F tier because anyone who writes Rust will not shut up about it, man. You go on any forum, anywhere online, you see, rewrite this in Rust. This could be done better in Rust. I don't care, it works how it is now, leave it alone. For real, I think, I've only used Rust a little bit, but I think overall it's a pretty nice language it's got some nice features, um, especially with like boiler checking and the compiler is pretty nice. It tells you uh, that you're an idiot all the time, but it does help you write safer code. I'm gonna probably put it at B tier. You can't really see it, but it's at the top of B tier. Okay, so now we have Swift. I have used Swift a total of one time and it was okay. It wasn't great. Nothing really stuck out about it. Unless you're writing native iOS apps, don't use it. There's no real use case outside of that that you know, you'd know you want to use Swift with. I'm gonna put this at D tier. And the last on the list is Visual Basic. This is F tier. Don't use this. Um, the equal sign to check equality instead of assigning something. That's garbage. Just don't use it. Use uh, C Sharp, use something else instead of Visual Basic in this day and age. It's, it's old, it's outdated, it's garbage.